Uh, today is the it's July 5th, 2018, and today I happen to be privileged to be at the University of Vienna in Austria, where I'm you know, going to talk with Professor Adams Bodomo, the chair of the Department of African Studies at this university. Uh, Professor Bodomo is a top you know, not a scholar in linguistic theory as well as you know African studies, African language, uh, African language studies, and he has done extensive work on uh, Mabia languages, especially the language of Dagare, spoken in Ghana, and other related languages in the area, as well as a lot of work on linguistic theory, mainly in the, within the theory of lexical functional grammar. Today, and Professor Bodomo has, you know, did his PhD at Trondheim University in Norway. He's held appointments as a visiting scholar at Stanford University in California. And he was, you know, for many years, associate professor in the Department of Linguistics at the University of Hong Kong, where he also uh, initiated or pioneered the African Studies program there and you know, managed to get that incorporated into the curriculum of Hong Kong University. And upon moving from Hong Kong, he has now assumed the chair of the Department of African Studies at the University of Vienna. And today, I'm exceptionally fortunate to have an opportunity to have a conversation with him, not about technical linguistics, <laughs> which I suspect, you know, uh, he has a lot of passion for, but about his other areas of interest. And I'll let him get into that, you know, immediately. So, uh, for, for a start, Professor Bodomo, thank you very much for accepting to talk with me at very short notice. <laughs> uh, what I want to get into um, is the following. Uh, a former student of mine from Hong Kong mm -hmm. shared with me a Facebook thing you posted right. about how, you know, comparing mm -hmm. lang you know, countries that are very religious mm -hmm. <laughs> and their levels of development yeah. and those which are less religious and yeah. their levels of development. Yeah. And according to the ranking you had, mm -hmm. I think something like China mm -hmm. seemed to rank top as mm -hmm. not exactly very religious and yet, you know, making a lot of progress in development yeah. and African countries were at the bottom and yet they are very religious, but you know, and I think you made a rather general comment to say, I think we should now review yeah. our commitment to religion, perhaps yeah. even convert churches and yeah. mosques to, you know, schools and uh, let yeah. those things become, yeah. you know, uh, buildings for teaching science mm. in the local languages, yes. in African languages. Yes. I want to take you up on that one. Yeah. Okay. Why was it? Why is it so significant for you mm. to how to talk about teaching mm. in African languages mm. when you look at African education? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chambu. You were just now saying that I'm one. Of, I'm well known in my field. That I'm very humble to for you a well known scholar. <laughs> like this in the field. I mean, you, you and Professor Bresnan uh, literally, uh, you know, uh, curated lexical functional grammar and brought it to where it is. So you are, you are a, a, a very strong uh, figure, a very known figure in the field. And I'm very happy that you've come all the way to our university. And it's an honor to have you here. Now, to get to your questions, yes, I, you know, this, uh, I, I am uh, Africa, has found itself in many people agree that Africa has found in a mess. And you know, very few people can say that Africa is doing very, very well. So therefore, we must begin to look for problems, so solutions to, to these problems. And so, uh, when that chart came up, I mean, it's that chart may be simplistic, but it has there's something important about it. You know uh, that uh, some countries, those countries that are not even very religious, are still doing very well, and those countries that are doing very, very religious don't seem to do very well. Now, I think that there's something behind all this. Uh, we're not saying that people shouldn't have faith in these parts of the world. Anybody is allowed to have faith. But the most important 
issue, the most important point we must notice is, is the kind of the sec secular state. You know, the idea of uh, you know um, separating religion from the, the the state, the state apparatus. Once you bring in religion into the state apparatus, then you compromise so many things. So that the basis for my statement is that we must keep these countries as secular as possible and it is the most secular it seems to me countries that are the most the, uh, the best functioning countries look at china it's very secular look at here yeah, I, mean, I mean many of these countries are secular india is secular because even though people are, are believe in hinduism hinduism doesn't affect the government but in african countries we are beginning to see a case in which actually uh, some governments are already hijacked by religious interests and so that is the is the, is the problem so therefore that's why i am now saying that that's why i'm not saying that and when that happens people young people spend all their time just praying and praying and not doing anything i mean they don't read they just read only they may just read only the bible so that's something that and these are resources these churches and and mocks are resources in a revolution to be used as centers of literacy I believe that we should use these centers as uh, centers, and we convert them. Let people uh, convert them into into literacy uh, centers. Uh, as somebody told me, uh, so therefore, therefore, so for example, a church that is just used for only this can now be used, it can bring the kids in the village to come there, give them lamps, let them read, let teachers teach them how to 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 read basic science, basic the the, the periodic table. You know, it has to be done in our languages. Okay. And so therefore, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, let me push you a little more on that. Yeah, yeah. My, the question, you know, my interest is less mm -hmm. to do with whether people should be, mm -hmm. you know, embrace faith or not. Yeah. I want to take you up on the final comment you made, mm -hmm. which is that the instruction, mm -hmm. whether it's in science mm -hmm. or anything, should also be in the African languages. Yes. And it's that aspect I want to pick up mm. because African education yeah. is one that has, you know, been dominated by, you know, Western knowledge systems yes. and the use yeah. of Western languages. Mm -hmm. And I want to get, you know, and in, in recent times, yeah. as there's been this clamor for the decolonization of education. Mm -hmm. What exactly is the content of that when, it, when we realize that mm -hmm. we are still, you know, we tend to think mm -hmm. of Western knowledge system and especially mm -hmm. the impact of science and technology has heightened all that, mm -hmm. all right, and mm -hmm. the idea that, you know, science, math, technology are best expressed in non-African <laughs> languages <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. so and, and not only that, you know, mm. so the point is that we have a curricula or mm. curricula mm. that are dominated by foreign knowledge systems yeah. conveyed in foreign languages and we even, you know, in African education, it even gets to the stage where mm. a person believes they are, you know, it's, they are educated if they can speak yes. English. Yes. What is your take on that? Well, my take on that, first of all, uh, to go back to the beginning of your, you know, the comment you made about and because education is, there have just been many, many studies. Educationists always say that people understand concepts best in the languages they speak, in their, their mother tongues. I mean, so therefore, there's no contestation as to this. And so, uh, even though, and, and, and uh, if you look at the mass that people, uh, the, the performances, the PISA, you know, the, 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 the PISA test and other, mm -hmm. the best people are people who have studied, the best people in maths, the best people in science are people who have studied this in their languages. Okay. In Chinese, the Japanese, you know, not just only Western, but they all. So it is, it just goes without saying that we don't even need to debate the merits of studying uh, these things in our languages. Now, people, people say that, well, you know, but these terms uh, are not in African languages. You know, how do you, uh, how do you express, you know, uh, say, the, 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 uh, the periodic table? How do you mention all those items? And I'm saying this is absolute, you know, it, it is something we can do. All the, 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 the people, uh, the, the language, Korean, you know, Japanese, they also have to sit down and invent these same scientific terminologies in their language. So it is not beyond us. We in Africa, so the content of it is that we have to go out there and curate these languages, develop these languages, uh, develop terminologies for 
our languages and use them to teach uh, the, the science and, and maths and, and everything in, in these languages. So I, I see no hindrance in, in using these languages to, to study science and maths and, 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 and other things and other technical subjects. Okay. Yeah. Um, the detractors mm. tend to once again, mm. you know, focus on the impact or relevance or role of science and technology mm. in economic development. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, there's mm -hmm, always the mm -hmm. tendency to say, oh, mm. you, you know, um, if we are going to make economic progress, mm. you must, you know, adapt to modern technology, yeah. which you know, which is, you know. Most of it is viewed as the result, so you know that science mm. has given us, mm. as well as math, amongst other things, and that you know since that you know has been you know given to us primarily mm. in foreign languages, mm. we must, as it were, retain those foreign languages for exactly those persons. If we're going to have, if African countries are going to make economic advancement at all, mm. what's your take on? that kind of line of argumentation? Again, that line of argumentation, it doesn't have any ground to stand on. You know, if you just step away from Western and step away from Africa, and again, I, I, I sometimes talk about this because of my experience in Asia. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Asia. You know, these, uh, so of course, the Chinese have always had mathematics throughout, but there are some languages, there are some people in Asia who didn't also have these terminologies. Look at Indonesian, Bahasa Indonesian. They didn't have these terminologies, but after independence, they were they were they were Dutch speaking. After independence, they just started their new their national language, and translated and developed Bahasa Indonesian into I mean and, and terminologies were brought in. So non non Western, they, they were not, they were just also like African who, who didn't have these concepts in their languages. So I disagree that uh, I mean it is only we we must we, we must use. Uh, English and French and Portuguese to study because these terms are already established in English and French and Portuguese. The, the example from, from Indonesia, from Singapore, from uh, you know Malaysia shows that we should also be able to, to curate our languages and, and develop technologies by developing technologies to in these languages to, and then to use them to, to learn uh, to, uh, to teach our children maths and science and other things. There's just there's just no I mean there's there's no ground for people for the for the for the detractors as you as you mentioned. <laughs> there's no ground for them. I mean they have there is hollow. So <laughs> the most important thing is to do what is pragmatically possible, what is emp 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 empirically possible. All right. Mm. Um, you know, more, you know, mm. taking it a step further. Yeah. One of the arguments, probably one of the, the primary arguments that mm -hmm. those who advocate the use of African languages in education mm -hmm. tend to be to focus on, you know, early education. You know, so what? Early, early, early education. Early yes, education. Yes, yes, yes. Namely, that yeah. you, you, know, you have children mm -hmm. who are speaking the, you know, their own mother tongues, their languages in the village. Mm -hmm. You are sending them to school. Mm -hmm. And then you find that in school, you know, they're supposed to adapt to foreign knowledge systems mm. in a foreign language. And mm. in some cases, and I can give an example of mm. Malawi, mm. which came along with an education policy mm. now around 2012, 2011, 2012, mm. where it was actually decreed that English should be taught from grade one. Yes. So the idea is that, mm. you know, they blame mm. law you know, performance or low achievements mm. in academic, you know, performance mm. on their on the students' poor understanding of English, mm. and that's so the belief is that you know if they start you know learning mm. English mm. from grade one and also hearing it as the medium of instruction, mm. it's going to improve their understanding of English and thereby will get, help them to perform better, mm. and yet. It turns out that at those stages, most mm -hmm. of the children get tuned out of education yeah. because they don't understand what's going on in the school, in, in, in class. You can speak perfect right? English so, without understanding. <laughs> yeah, so the question, and yeah. you know, and as John Mugane has yeah. pointed out, that yeah. it actually winds up, you know, education gets reduced to rote memorization. Yes. All right, so the question is, do you think that, you know, the children are, you know, you know that the society is doing a, a disservice or mm. the education is doing a disservice mm. to the cognitive development of the children mm. when they leave their village to go to the school and they are required mm. to adapt almost immediately mm. to 
instruction in a foreign la- in a foreign language mm. and looking at you know foreign no- no- knowledge systems mm. and getting cut off from their own linguistic and cultural heritage. Mm. Okay, the, 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 the whole thing is that, I mean, to, to, the question about letting them start English at, at early stages, they may speak English very well, but that doesn't mean that it's not the best speakers of English who are the best thinkers, you know. So in our places, you can see somebody can just speak fluent in a grammar, I mean, but yet not be very good at maths. Yeah. So, I mean, so if they were the case, then all the people who speak English in England were the best mathematicians. So I don't, I don't, I don't buy this, this, this thing again. But the, the, the mistake these kind of people make is that, um, they must understand that uh, human beings are by nature multilingual. Societies are multilingual. So, uh, in, my, in my policy proposals, I have said that nobody has said that we should not read or I mean, speak or teach English and French. This is not the argumentation. The argumentation has always been that start with the child's mother tongue. And in education, again, you have the idea of transferability. Skills learned in one language can be transferred to one another language. So the, the, the problem that we have when children now go from the, primary, from the village where they have learned, uh, you know, math and science and other concepts in their mother tongue, and they suddenly just get exposed. I mean, they come to the, the city and they have to learn English, and the problem is that uh, they, didn't, they must also learn English as a strong subject. So the main proposal is that while teaching, while using... Uh, Chichewa or Dagara or Dabani as mother tongue, as, as, as medium of instruction, you should also teach English as a strong subject. I use the concept of a strong subject. So that by the time the child is moving on to secondary school, they are going to speak English as well. So therefore, they get two things. They can transfer their proficiency in mathematics, in science, in Dabani or in Chichewa or in to Swahili or to English or to other languages. So if we handle this well, it is possible. And I propose a, tri- a localized trilingual policy. So in the case of Ghana, take these children in their villages about their, their languages. By the time they get to university, they're able to speak their mother tongue, a major Ghanaian language like Chui, or a major uh, uh, language, African language, and then English. So they get trained. They get trained. They come out multilingual speakers. And I can ha- I have an example in Norway. In Norway, when I went, uh, I, I was, besides doing linguistics, I also started a class, a computer science class. Indeed, I have a minor in computer science. And the Norwegian students were then beginning to use English books as their course, prescribed course materials. It, they, didn't, they didn't suffer because they knew their language. And so they could also then transfer their knowledge of science in Norwegian to English and to read their English books. So there's no problem about that. Multilingualism is, is, is very much human nature. Anybody can be multilingual. And so I believe that in our systems, if we, we just have to, uh, you know, organize these languages well, it is not the case that many languages are a problem, but it is the way we manage these many languages that is the problem. If we can manage these languages well, we do turn into resources for, uh, the develop, for education. All right. Yeah. Um, mm. Do you have any mm. final comments on this topic? You know, the whole yeah. idea of yeah. you know, decolonization of education, yeah. decolonization yeah. of languages, the mm. use of African languages, the yeah. promotion of African knowledge systems yeah. Yeah. in the curricula of African you know, education. Yeah. I'll say it's good as scholars like you and, and, and other people, and me and other people are doing this, but it's not in, enough until we can find a way to get government to begin to listen to us. Mm. Governments are just, all these things always fall on deaf ears. Okay, so we should find a way to take our research to, to, the, to the doorstep of government. And I don't know how we can do that. I mean, should we turn into politicians ourselves? Should we hijack parliaments? I don't know. But we have to, the challenge for us is we have to find a way to get these politicians to start acting. That's my last comment. Okay. Thank you. Well, on that note, um, I want once again to express my sincere thanks to Professor Adams Bodomo, the Chair of the Department of African Studies here at the University of Vienna in Austria. Uh, I am very sure that the comments that she has made about you know, our response to you know, problems in our educational systems, our response to 
you know, how education contributes to economic development in our countries is something that we hope, you know, uh, our politicians will at least take heed of. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I want to say once again to you, thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Jambu. Okay. Yeah.